Oh, is it on? Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. Alright, just to analyze this game. Isn't it? Yes. Okay. So we pushed through the center here just to block that off. And then we came through. And then we captured. Could have gone for this pawn here, but we decided not to go for that because, as we know, for the gambits, if you're a pawn up, that's fine. You can take this pawn, it is feasible to do so, but what you tend to do is open up all of the space for the opponent and you lose tempo in developing your pieces. That's my general understanding. So we push the pawn here, as we do, to block this pawn, because this pawn obviously is looking to come here kind of preventing us from actually bringing our knight into the game so it's simple potatoes so they bring the bishop through so we develop the knight now so if they did drop we could still take the pawn here so we're not bothered about this pawn now they can take it back yeah which they do so then we develop our bishop so that's all nice and hunky dory for us this is a five minute one second game so part of the mini speed series type situation that we're working on at the minute and they brought the night out as usual it's very warm so I've got my windows open again so if you can hear the outside then so be it they develop their night and we bring our bishop through does, the computer does not like this bishop move here I didn't really want to overextend it I mean Ordinarily, I think you just bring the bishop here so it's x raying through to the queen. On this occasion, here, I thought, well, I want to just um, see if the opponent's going to overextend and see if I can take advantage of that sort of situation. So that's what I was thinking. Develop the knight. Again, computer really doesn't like this move either. But again, I'm thinking I'll just wait for the opponent to see what they're going to do to try and take advantage of this situation during the game you don't see the gauge bar I'm feeling fairly comfortable with the position hey Julio are you okay oh I forgot to put on something oh I don't think I can do it now oh I don't think I can do it now damn okay never mind um so yeah so we brought the night here during during the uh, matches you don't actually see the gauge bar so I'm feeling comfortable in this position here. And five, <laughs> five minutes is a, a long time with a one second increment. It feels like I'm playing now um, a, a classical game. Nice. Okay, cool. So you're just chipping in, are you? <laughs> That's all good. I'm just doing like a speed session today. Um, not feeling too up to the speedy stuff, so I've done some previous, two, two games I've played, so I'm just going through the analysis now, just having a look at what went on. So currently we're in a losing state here, says the computer, didn't feel that way during the match. Have you got any dates for our OTP thing, because it's coming up next week, I'm off for two weeks, aren't I? Let's not forget. And I've got my camera set now. I'm using the camera as the webcam at the minute. 
So I'm practicing utilizing the camera for, you know, different formats and stuff like that within this sort of um, twitchy type YouTube and stuff and all that business. So getting used to it. I'm such a rookie. I'm so way behind everybody else, but <laughs> what can you do? Uh, so they bring the bishop out. So he's got like all his minor pieces out there. So it does look quite good. But during the game, obviously, I'm thinking, I'm just waiting for them to overextend as best possible. Excellent. Good stuff. So we jump over and attack the bishop. So knights hunt the bishops in our mantra. I don't think he's keeping the bishop there. He's going to either move it back here, he's going to move it there. In my head, um, all I can see is him trying to potentially get some type of battery with his queen, with his bishop towards our king area so in my head i'm thinking that's the way they're potentially going to overextend and let's see what they're going to do so i'm basically cajoling them to go into that position so he brings the bishop through and we bring the knight back again and now he pushes through onto our pawn so we can take this pawn and we bring the knight down so this knight has got like a dual purpose sense i mean it's looking to gather king area at some point but very mindful that they are potentially looking for this or trying to get the queen to come here to get the battery on this pawn always in this sort of position here most of the players that i've played against they go with that kind of psychology of okay i'm going to start putting pressure on the king gary which is the answer process the answer process basically works along the candidate moves, which is checks, captures, threats, support, and blocking. Um, we use the position in front of the checks and also the positions at the bottom end of it as well. So we're always checking our position. So we're not overextending it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, my man Julio is practicing this type of thing <laughs> where he's just sitting back waiting for the opponents to overextend. It's a good touch. Um, but we also do like to go in for some major attacks as well. But in this particular game here, I'm sat back waiting to see what the opponent wants to do. So they bring the knight down now, attacking the bishop. So now we're just pushing our pawn through. Computer does not like our position in the slightest. Like we say, we don't see the computer when we're actually playing the game. I'm still feeling fairly comfortable because I have an idea as to what I want to do. Obviously, if the opponent knew the best moves, which is what the computer thinks it's got, then we would be in trouble, probably. Probably. But as a human player, nine times out of ten, they ain't going to find those computer-type moves. Unless, of course, I'm playing the 2000 plus -er. dun 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 controversial. Never mind. So they take, and then we capture with the queen. It's also looking at getting an angle on this pawn here with his bishop. So he's going for not cheap shots, but they're kind of obvious maneuvers. Okay, we're still waiting for this attack here to come through. So we're not going to lose any sleep. So he takes the pawn because obviously he's going for the cheap shot here, but the knight is protecting here. So obviously we can take with the queen or we can take with the rook. So that's our move order sorted on that side. So the bishop moves back because it's got nothing protecting it at the moment. So they've lost a little bit of tempo in terms of their attacking potential. So we move our king out of the airy di diagonal that it's got here. The bishop coming here, the queen are coming there. But he's still obviously going to be thinking about attacking this side. But he's probably going to be looking more for a power base this way. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know what they're going to do. My pieces haven't even gone past the halfway mark. And as they bring the queen through, they're following that track of basically attempting to come to put pressure on the king area that's what i saw in the game anyway we'll bring the knight out now maybe potentially looking to put some pressure on the queen so they actually take the knight off the board and we capture at this point now it's um well they've lost any advantage type thing that they potentially had during the game so they bring the queen through. We were always expecting this manoeuvre. Um, this was a long time coming. So we brought our bishop through because we've got the rook protecting. We've got the queen protecting. So we're looking to basically get his bishop off the board. 
So then the battery that they were so keen to get right from the early part of the game, you could tell by the way they positioned their pieces, um, it's now kind of fallen apart a little bit. So they moved the queen out of the way, so we simply take the bishop off the board and the queen catches. So we now can attack the knight and the queen, so we're attacking two pieces again. We were attacking the main piece with the bishop, straight through forward nice and steady and now we're attacking the knight and the queen so what do they do they capture and we bring the pawn into the well next to the queen don't really want it hanging there in the middle by itself so the rook comes and attacks the pawn gauge bars on our fit in our favor at this point in time um my own personal gauge bar was on my side right from the very start, so I was feeling fairly comfortable with this type of um, position because really it's kind of weakened this pawn because the rook was protecting this pawn. But I suppose he's looking for an even exchange, but we do have a check on his king, so we win a moment of time, I suppose. So we capture the king and um, pawn, sorry, with a check on the king, and now we can look to attack his queen. And the queen moves into the far corner. I think it's obviously looking for maybe a bit of a cheap shot here. But the queen is currently protecting. But also being mindful of this situation. Just in case our queen decides to jump off. Or we can still come to attack the top. But we've got to be mindful that he could get a background checkmate if we go crazy. So we bring the rook up. Now we're looking to touch onto the pawn here. Obviously, we're expecting the rook to come back to defend. Um, but they don't do that. And they push the pawn. So we get a checkmate. Okay. And it wasn't that their time was running out either. I mean, they were on more time than me. Four minutes and ten uh, to three minutes and 39. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um <clears throat> But they were kind of blip, uh, well, bullying out the moves in the early part of the game and then towards the end of the game. So again, when you're moving that fast, you're not really putting 100% of your calculation into the actual game. So that was a, a, a nice game of position play for myself, I believe. Um, even though the gauge bar was against us, um, during the game, like I said, you don't have a gauge bar, you don't have a computer, unless, of course, you're cheating. Um, and you have to have that confidence to be able to sit back and look at what the opponent's attempting to do and then potentially blocking off what they are trying to do as best possible while you're doing that, making sort of spaces for your own attacks. Basically, they force themselves to lose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to look at the um, second game that we played. And uh, how do I get through that now? There, blah, blah, blah. Uh, go to the profile so this is like the speed chess section so we're just looking at the games I think I played two games today uh, da, 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 da. they're only a quick anonymous ones I might go in and play a normal one and this is a three minute and one doom, 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 doom. colors Yeah, that's right. Is that showing on there? Nope, because it's not in the right position. Okay, so we played white in this one. This was a three minute and one second game. So it's a little bit quicker, but it's still nowhere near the two minute and one second one. So still felt like I had lots of time to be able to make some moves. So we played as white here and just pushed through with our usual E4 and I did say I was going to start showing some of my unusual moves and stuff like that. But I think the unusual moves are the secret moves. So maybe I shouldn't be showing the secret unusual moves. Because if I'm playing somebody like Julio, I don't, I don't want him knowing my secret stuff. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So we push through all the pawn here. And then we attack the pawn. And then we attack through the center. That's all pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Okay, then we captured, captured. Tacked his knight. 
<laughs> so now we've got this position here whereby these pawns potentially are going to be free to be taken and they take back so we capture with the um, knight it usually are classed as a poison pawn and the gauge bars probably may be agreeing with the fact that it might be a poisonous pawn but I thought I'm just going to chance it it's three minutes and one second game maybe the opponent's going to flap under the time pressure or something so we bring the knight back and attack the bishop and then they capture the pawn knowing full well the knight is just going to come back and attack the knight and take it off the board so I felt fairly good about the position really I mean my other pieces aren't active but if you look at all the sort of gaping gaps across here that we can actually take advantage of the opponent can but they've only got one piece that's there it's got his knight which is sort of jammed in the center so it's not really too active so we put a mini check on the king so that he potentially can't go on castle uh, so he moves his king out of the way and I did think well that might be wrong but again you have to kind of prove why it's wrong just because it's in the center of the board doesn't mean that he's lost the game his time's running down though and um, so he's uh, getting into a little bit of time trouble so we castle well, now we're looking to try and sort of squinch them a little bit. So we attack the knight. Gage by saying there was something better. But hey, that felt good to me. And then the knight comes in front of his king. So we put a check on the king. I was thinking of coming here. But then all he's going to do is drop the pawn here. I wasn't too bothered about this pawn dropping here. Because I had more space for my queen to play around with. Something like that. So they pushed onto the queen and then we took the pawn because that pawn was supporting this pawn. So it's like a freebie for us. Rook is available there. Now, you know, I'm seeing that rook now and I bet you any money I didn't even take that off the board. I can feel that in my water now. So, oh, that's why. <laughs> that's why. Yeah. So the bishop comes through and attacks our queen, but... Because they're actually blocking their queen from actually defending this pawn, our queen can actually take the pawn with a check on the king. It's just unfortunate we can't take the knight because the bishop's protecting. So that was a little bit of a little bit of heartache there, but never mind. So we grab the pawn. So the king's coming further into the board. So it's you think it's going to be a little bit simple to get it, but then. I thought best off just putting the x-ray through and then at least this pawn can come up and attack his knight. And at least we get a minor piece off the board and we'll be a minor piece up. Especially if his bishop wants to get a little bit funky and arty. So the rook comes through. So then we put pressure onto the knight. And then the bishop did come and attack our queen. He's got an x-ray through to our rook as well. Cheers. Thanks for playing, stopping by, Julio. Nice one. Catch up soon. All right. Okay, so the bishop's got an x-ray through to the queen and onto the rook. So we know that the rook is probably going to fall, but we may have a minor piece up anyway and a better position on the board. So we captured the knight with a check on his king. So we win a bit of tempo, being able to take his queen off the board. And he takes back with the rook and we take the queen off the board and they capture back and we actually went and snapped the pawn up in the far corner some would say well you know you should have just moved your rook out of the way but i'm looking for an improved position on the board so we're attacking his rook so we can move the bishop back he captures ours so now we've got three pieces against his two pieces he's got two rooks in the grand scheme of things, you'd think that would be winning, but utilising the rooks in the right way may have given them a better advantage. Our king can come through and attack his rook. And at this moment in time, now he's got his rooks all nicely placed. And we attack his rook with our knight. And his time was running down, as you can see, he's on 20 seconds at, the, at that moment. So time does some strange things for, to people. So he brought his rook into the line of fire for our knight. So we grabbed the knight, grabbed the rook with the knight. 
So now we're just pushing the pawns up, now just keeping everything as safe as possible. So we attack, a smaller piece attacking a higher piece, can't be wrong. And develop the rook through now looking to basically put some pressure onto the king, maybe take, a, take the pawn off at the top here, maybe get the bishop back in the rook, you know, give him a bit of a harassment going on there. So the king moves down and we harass the rook. Rook moves and then we harass it again. And then we start putting pressure onto the king. King moves out of the way. Could have taken the pawn with the rook, but thought, well, it's only got a few seconds left, so we may as well keep harassing the king. And just bring the bishop down to nice safety, but also um, blocking the rook from actually putting a check on. And at that point, black timed out. So again, another positive one for actual um, position play within the game, especially with these um, speedy type games trying to manage the time as best possible so that felt fairly clean and didn't over egg any of the games and just really focused on trying to get my pieces working together as best possible so that was the the whole all for my previous speed speed run games well not speed run games speed chess games so just going to take a break and then we'll come back and uh, maybe jump in on one or two Better put that back on enter. All right, okay. And let's see what we've got here. Need to close that down. Don't know what that's showing on there for. And close that. Do, 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 do. Is this the page? Is it? Yes, okay. So, what we're going to go for is a three minutes and zero. Okay, see how we get on there. Casual, yep, let's do this. Let's have a look. Wow, that was quick. Were well, they sat waiting for me? Wow. <laughs> That's funny. They were sat waiting for me, weren't they? Interesting times. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> 
<laughs> steadfully. Right, okay, let's go here. Didn't even get a chance to breathe. Let's go here. Try and keep it as simple as possible. And let's take it. So it's all set for basically it's focusing on here as usual. And if we take this pawn, then that's going to be to our detriment because he's got his rook hitting here. He's got his queen hitting there as well. So as soon as we know that, we may as well start doing some sort of activity on the other side of the board as best possible. <clears throat> okay, we can attack the queen or open up the space, which is best for us in this situation. I know time's going down and all that's ticking away. Um, we do like to open up the centre, don't we? Is, is it really opening it up? I'm taking it. Just stick with what you normally do. Okay, and just bring the knight out now. Looking for maybe a juicy position here on the other side of the ball because they're looking for all the activity to kick off on this side. And if we can avoid it as best possible. Ah, he's taken now. Okay. So he's got his plan set already. See how fast he's moving there. Everything was focused on attacking this area, like we said. Okay, so he's moved back, so we can just develop our knight attacking the queen. If they forget themselves, let's take this queen off the board quick time. Oh, let's take it. Let's take it. Come on, mister, I was waiting for you. Damn, wow. I don't think I've ever had a seek come on as quick as that. Wow. On live chess. I mean, on chess.com, they come on like that. But with live chess, this has got to be the fastest seek that's accepted the seek. Wow. Okay, so there's a long thing going on here. Oh, and the resignation. Okay. So let's have a look at the analysis on that one there then. Okay. Let's get the gauge bar thing up there and see what has transpired. I mean, we talked through the story of that um, position, but we're just going to take our time and, and work through and get a good understanding as to what went on because we're not, we're really not bothered about the gauge bar being low, um, especially if we're comfortable with the position that we've got. And so let's just. Uh, Click through here. Okay, so the opponent came out blazing. Yeah, it's a three minute zero game. So they came out blazing and um, playing more bullet style than anything else. So maybe taking a little bit of time to get more appropriate positions because you could tell they understood what to do because of the way they were positioning their pieces. Um, but the journey that we've been on in terms of our own development is trying to understand those sort of patterns, the sort of strategies that potentially people, players, will try and go for. Um, this player was 1,500, wasn't there on here, but their highest rating was, I think, 17 on something else. So I always go on the highest one. So I'll, I'll class them as a 1,700. And we've covered the traits of the 1,700s. Uh, so we kind of understand the makeup of that type of play. Not everybody falls into that, um, you know, that strategy. But I think it's good to have a, a nice understanding as to what you can potentially expect. So with the bishop, bishop coming out here, and then they're locking their bishop in, basically, well, locking it out of their team's um, activities instantly. I'm thinking, yes, they're actually going to start trying to work their way through, either with the queen or with the bishop bringing it here and working this way. And they're going to try and get this rook putting pressure onto the king. That's just based on my own experience. So because we we know this, we can position our pieces in readiness for that type of attack. 
because we don't want to over egg anything. So we bring our bishop through now, so it's um, nicely attacking this pawn here, but it's also potentially looking to sit back here. But we always know that this pawn bishop may come out and we'll just take that bishop off the board. So there's many ifs, buts and maybes about this position. All depends on what the opponent is wanting to do. So we open up the dark square bishop, you know, making space. Obviously, we're going to attack. Now, that is where you find out what the makeup of the player is, if they actually capture or if they go back here and do this um, particular move here. So once this bishop's out, if they go back, then you definitely know for sure they're playing for attacking down here. Because if we did take, then they take. They've got this power base here. Once they come and attack our bishop, is it not my go? Oh, it's our go. So if we did something, if we castled, then that would be a bit of an error as far as I could see. So maybe if we brought the knight out here, then they brought the bishop. Then if we take, then they take. Then they've got this lovely power base here. Yes, the knight is here at the moment, but they're going to get rid of our knight somehow. Yeah, don't know if it's pushing this pawn or maybe pushing this pawn down. Yeah, to actually get towards it. So then you get kind of squished. So it's not a definite win for them, but it's it looks quite good. And you're constantly on the back foot in that situation. So we didn't want any of that. So we castled. Yeah. So it's for the opponent to break through into this position if they want that position for themselves so we captured yep so as we mentioned we always know that they're attempting to come here either even with the knight even pushing these pawns down trying to get some sort of activity going so that's what we're expecting we're waiting for that but in the meantime as we said during the game let's make some activity on the other side of the board give them something to think about and hopefully get a better position for ourselves. As you can see the cage bars on our side at the minute. Whoop whoop. So we captured. And let me see. It's, it's not too dissatisfied with it. I mean it dropped down 0.2. I wasn't really into the locking down thing here. Because it's still giving him this diagonal. And then I've not got, I've not got any play. You know, my dark square bishop can't dance anywhere, queen can't dance anywhere. So making that little momentary gap to me was like gold dust. So they captured and we developed the knight through. Okay, so again, I'm trying to focus on the other side of the board. As we mentioned, we said, well, the knight can come in here attacking the queen. So they did finally take the bishop off the board. So that really solidified the fact that this attack towards our king area was no longer going to take place apart from the knight coming here looking for a cheapy and the knight does come down for the cheapy so we just simply push the pawn up and the knight jumps back and then we actually attack the queen a smaller piece attacking the higher piece looking for this golden um spot here but it is showing it's a draw is the gauge bar i to me, I'm feeling, well, we're doing okay. Yes, the queen is potentially going to move somewhere to a safe area, you know. Um, but other than that, I felt like we were going to be okay because potentially we're going to be owning this file with one of our rooks. And that's a key thing, especially to going towards the end game. So that's why we felt fairly okay with that. De definitely didn't feel like it was a draw because we were driving the momentum in this game. So the queen moves, but obviously potentially should have been moving here, you know, to stop the knight from jumping here. So that was a little bit too straightforward, a win of material in a sense, because we get a check on the king, we can get the rook, definitely gain the queen. But when you look at it, I believe the move there because our queen doesn't have any protection on it. Yeah, so obviously, I mean... I, this is quite clear a fork that the knight can do, but because they're bulleting the moves out, all they see is the queen is unprotected, so if the knight does move, I'm going to take his queen for free. But 
they lost tempo because we won the time back by having a check on his king. So that's the way that game went. Um, fairly interesting game in terms of understanding position over speed. And that is the key main thing that we work on, especially in the earlier videos that we've done within Chess Gym, is about understanding that, yes, you can move fast, but if your position is not that good, then you're not really going to be developing your own game and you're not really going to get advantages you know, on the board. So that's one of the speed sessions there. I mean, um, I might go in for one more, but I'll probably take, be pushing it too far. I've already played three. Um, I'm not really into the fast games. So I think, you know what? I'm actually going to sign off. I'm going to sign out, leaving it with a beautiful position play, as we can see on the screen here. Knight, fork in the king, queen and the rook. What a better way to end the session.